And our word for today on this Friday of the 16th week in Ordinary Time, this Friday, July the 28th, our word for today, our words for today, bears fruit, bears fruit. We continue in our reading from the book of Exodus, now chapter 20. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have any other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments." You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished him who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days... The Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. This is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife nor is male or female slave, nor is ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 19. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Holy Gospel is from uh, the 13th chapter of Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Mm. And our words for today bears fruit, bears fruit, our words for today. Our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's gospel reading, these he shared at his Angelus address on July the 16th, 2017. Our heart, like the soil, may be good, and then the word bears fruit, and a great deal of fruit, but it can also be hard and impenetrable. This happens when we hear the word, but it bounces off of us, just as on a street, This is how the superficial heart is. It welcomes the Lord, wants to pray, love and bear witness, but does not persevere. It becomes tired and never takes off. It is a heart without depth where the rocks of laziness prevail over the good soil, where love is fickle and fleeting. But whoever welcomes the Lord only when they want to does not bear fruit. The thorns are the vices which come to blows with God, which choke His presence. Each of us can recognize his or her big or small thorns, the vices that inhabit the heart, those more or less deeply rooted briars that God does not like 
and that prevent us from having a clean heart. Let us find the courage to reclaim the soil, to effect a nice conversion of our heart, bringing to the Lord in confession and in prayer our rocks and our thorns. In doing this, Jesus the Good Sower will be glad to carry out an additional task, purify our hearts by removing the rocks and the thorns which choke His Word. The thorns are the vices which come to blow with God, which choke His presence. Man, well, we keep that in mind. And and look, are we surprised at the difficulty? This is a perfect description our Holy Father lays out. This is a fight, you know, and it, it's it's a uh, it's a street fight, really. I mean, it's it's uh, no no holds bar uh, because the enemy doesn't play by any rules. And of course, as in any fight, there's going to be pain inflicted, and we have to persevere through the pain. And also knowing that in the midst of this fight, we are made stronger. So we count the cost even as we enter into this relationship with the Lord. The most unjust thing, and I hope it's not being done. I know that it's been prevalent in, in some um, some portions of the, the body of Christ in various times and ages. And I've heard this gospel proclaimed even in our own country, but again, by some let's just say sex and of Christianity in our country that promise when you enter into a relationship with God, when you enter into a relationship with Jesus, things become peachy and, and wonderful and easy. No, of course not. That, that makes no sense at all because that that's absolutely antithetical to what it is to be a Christian that we willingly say that we are going to live lives of sacrifice that we are going to place others above ourselves. This ridiculous idea that the blessing of God is somehow measured by our material wealth, that the scripture over and over again, and Jesus himself says, is the difficulty uh, you are presented with so that you may deny it, yet you may walk away from it and choose God over it. There are greater things than material wealth. There are greater blessings. Believe me, brothers and sisters, there are much greater blessings than financial blessings. Not to say that we aren't thankful for those, but that's probably one of the smallest ways that God can bless us. But we thank him for it. We thank him for all of our blessings, and we certainly thank him for providing for our daily need. But we are called to the higher things. St. Paul says, After laying down everything, he says, now I will show you an even more excellent way. And what is the more excellent way that he lays out after he makes this statement? It's the way of love. It's the way of love. He makes it clear that if we do all of these things, give our bodies over to be burned, if we go and and uh, you know preach the gospel to the entire world, but we do it without love. There is no value in that. It comes down to love. And in love, we bear fruit. In love, we become a rich soil. And yes, through the difficulties, through the fight, we become a better and richer soil. Again, going back to our Holy Father's thoughts, The thorns are the vices which come to blows with God, which choke his presence. Each of us can recognize his or her big or small thorns, the vices that inhabit the heart, those more or less deeply rooted briars that God does not like and that prevent us from having a clean heart. Thank God that he points these things out to us, that we might deal with them and get rid of them by his grace and by his power, by his strength. Going to our first reading for today, uh, this laying out of the commandments before the Lord begins uh, to lay them out. He says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. Brothers and sisters, You want to know what's at stake in your life? 
Live your life for the Lord and he will bless you down to the thousandth generation. Hate him. And and it goes the opposite direction, but you could see punishment versus mercy. Third or fourth generation, he punishes those who hate him. To the thousandth generation, he blesses those who love him. One quick uh, quick comment about Ten Commandments. We have one commandment with a promise and one commandment with a punishment. You know, the one commandment with a promise is to honor your father and mother that you may have a long life on the land that the Lord your God has given to you. That's a pretty clear promise. Honor your father and mother and you will have a long life on the land that the Lord your God has given to you. Take the name, and then on the opposite side of that, one commandment with a clear punishment. If you take the name of the Lord your God in vain, it will not go unpunished. It will not go unpunished. So we have one commandment with a promise, one with a punishment, and those point to two very important things. Don't (laughs) honor your father and mother. Do that absolutely, and do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And in that way, we continue to enrich our soil to remove the thorns and all the encumbrances of having that rich soil that we might produce fruit in abundance. 30, 60, or a hundredfold bears fruit, our word for today.